two thirds of the Overwatch 2 Steam reviews came from China. Look at this. Here's something that no English language outlet has caught on to. Overwatch 2 currently has 100,000 reviews on Steam since launching three days ago, of which 91% are negative. However, two thirds of those reviews, 63K, are written in S Chinese. I don't know what that is, um, but with 97% of them being negative. Uh, alignment with initial audience on the surface, Chinese reviews mention a lot of the same elements uh, as reviews from the rest of the world. The lack of promised PVE content, uh, criticism over end game content, pricing, and perceived downgrades compared to Overwatch 1 are cited in all language reviews. Worst rated game of all time. That's right. As noted in the tweet below, Overwatch 2 has become the worst user-rated game of all time on Steam in just a couple of days. Yep, Blizzard hasn't been on the top of a chart for a long time, but they've managed to do it again. Uh, it takes the record from War of Three Kingdoms, a card battle game from Chinese developer Yuko. Uh, Yuka, I don't know what that is. I mean, probably it's War of Three Kingdoms, is, I think, like a story, a historical story from like back in the day in China. So, uh, big surprise, I'm not going to know that. Uh, some users that uh, left negative reviews for Overwatch 2 have proceeded to leave positive reviews for War of Three Kingdoms in the past couple of days, citing their desire for Overwatch 2 to keep its lead. However, War of Three Kingdoms still has 89% negative reviews, so still not great. Uh, what did the reviews say? On a theoretical level, the Steam launch for Overwatch 2 does allow players in China to access the game again. This is because the international version of Steam is accessible in China without a VPN, and the game has a uh, Chinese localization. However, the complaints are mostly revolving around uh, criticism of bl handling of Blizzard's game. Uh, sorry, uh, Blizzard's handling of the game. True. Uh, lack of a national server plus existing game account. I think that, I mean, I think anybody would be mad about that. Makes sense. Uh, slow to log in plus poor online connection. I think that's also very fair. Like if you're in China, I'd be fucking pissed too. Criticism over shutdown national server and the impact on gaming communities. Because remember, Blizzard uh, stopped operations in China. I know World of Warcraft at least did. So uh, yeah, it's no surprise that this happened. Uh, why are there so many reviews of China? Oh, here we go. Yeah, he's talking about it here. Um, most of you will be aware that Blizzard and NetEase ended their agreement for the distribution of Blizzard PC games in China, uh, leading to the shutdown of Overwatch 2 and other titles on January 23rd, 2023. Long story short, gamers in China have been upset about losing their accounts and ability to play on the national server with no announcement of a return so far. This launch on Steam is the first time that gamers can vent on an open and international platform, with many taking the opportunity to do so. What did Chinese players want? We conducted the survey in March 2023 and looked at Blizzard PC games. Uh, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, most popular PC games, this whole image. Um, Overwatch gamers... Uh, were most likely to switch to a similar game uh, publisher after the shutdown. Over 40% said that they were considered playing the game on a global server via VPN. 53% said they would start playing the game again if it relaunched in China with a national server. So that's not a surprise as well. So uh, let, let's go ahead and do some math here. Um, okay. So how many reviews does Overwatch 1 have right now? Uh, 100, what you want to do 100k? Uh, what, what do we want to go with? 110k, okay. So 110k, and what's the, um, uh, what's the negative uh, ratio with that? 91%, okay. So if it's 91% and 97%, that means the differential is 6%. So that means that even in the West, you could assume that that differential would be, it's about 85%. Like, because you think about it, right? I think that still means that if it's 91% positive, I could be doing this math wrong. I apologize if I am. So if it's 91% positive and two-thirds of them are negative, and then uh, two-thirds of them from China, and then the China differential is 97%, that means the differential between the global review and the China review is 6%. And so if that remaining one-third is to make a difference of six points, then it would have to be at least double below the 91% differential number, which would mean there would have to be 12 points under 91, which would be 79. So... 79% negative is really bad. Yeah, it's about 8%. Yeah, exactly. 79%. Yeah, there you go. Stats. Yeah, that's that's the way the numbers work. Where the fuck we get that number from? So basically, because we know two thirds are from there, uh, we would have to multiply the difference, uh, what do you call it, like two times. 
Uh, I think I'd have to, like, write it down. Like, I'm good at, like, visualizing shit like this in my head. This is why, like, whenever we did school, I never showed my work on math problems. But, like, explaining it might be a little bit harder, simply separating the Chinese and NA players. Well, what I'm saying is that, like, how much of a difference, like, how much of a difference here is it? Because, like, I don't want people to get the impression that the reason why Overwatch 2 was rated really badly was solely because of China. Because even in the most generous uh, assumption of, uh, of China rating it negatively, that still means that almost 80% of United States and non-China uh, voters also gave it a negative review. Even if it's 91% with two-thirds being Chinese at 97%. So, like, in order for that to average out, you would still have NA, uh, NA people rating it down at a tremendous amount. Like, way over 75%. Like 80, up to like 80%, I would say. These are fair reviews though. It's not like they aren't deserved. Well, here's the thing is that let's say that they're not, that they're not deserved. Let's say the Overwatch reviews are not deserved. Let's say 91% negative reviews aren't deserved. Is 80% deserved? What about 75? How about 70? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's still extremely bad. Like, even if, even in the most, if you remove every Chinese negative review and not a single person from China gave it a negative review at all, you would still have people that were giving it a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, that are giving it negative reviews at about a rate of 80%. That's extremely bad. Even if you completely take this off. I seriously think Overwatch 2 is the biggest fuck up in gaming history. It's so hard to say because like, you know, you have things like, I don't think cyberpunk is the biggest fuck up. I don't think so. And also Gollum, I don't think is the biggest fuck up either because nobody cared about that game to begin with. So it's like, how can it be that big of a fuck up if nobody cared about it? So, I don't know. Maybe Fallout 76 was worse. Atlas. Yeah. Yeah. It's like games like, yeah, Duke Nukem Forever, something like that. Literally buried the copies of ET game in the desert decades ago. Yeah, I remember I watched that video. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see here. We're based in the Western players. Oh yeah, like um, oh shit. Um, oh yeah, Chi Chinese players. Like I, I played with them. They're very. Um, I would say they're much more aggressive and much more direct than like Western players. And uh, I actually always appreciated that. I like that a lot more. Reforged or Diablo Immortal. I don't think Diablo Immortal was that bad. Diablo Immortal was a pay-to-win phone game, and everybody went into that expecting it to be that, and then it was. Like, that's it. Uh, is it a review bomb? Uh, review bomb if all the complaints are valid? It seems like it's just a review. Well, I think that... Okay, so I don't like the term review bomb. I think protest review is a better term. Because protest review doesn't necessarily mean that it's entirely wrong. It just means that people are giving it a negative review to things that are not necessarily attached to the game itself. Their review of the game is more or less a judgment on Blizzard as a whole, rather than just, is this a good game or not? But at that point, does it really matter? Uh, it doesn't matter where the reviews came from or why they are, if it's addressing the scam that's Overwatch 2. They sold the game on a premise in a PvE mode, they scrapped it, and then they're making a clone uh, minus one team of Overwatch 1. True. Uh, that being said, I'm not defending Blizzard here. No, I don't think anybody is. Like, it was uh, it was unfortunate that we had all that drama about, uh, you know, the Overwatch 2 monetization, because uh, it kind of brought... Like, the, the ultimate opinion that I have about Overwatch 2 is that I think them announcing that they're not going to do PvE content for Overwatch 2 killed the game. I think it killed the hype for the game. It sucks, man. And, and I think it's sad. On Twitch, Overwatch 2 is doing good. Let's talk about that. Where is it? Drops, 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 drop, drops. There's a lot of drops. Lots of people with drops. Take away the drops, and you're going to have a lot of people stop watching. That's just how it is.
What are they gonna compete? Nice to look forward to, but yeah, yeah, I, I know it's just like it sucks because I, I played a lot at the beginning too. But yeah, uh, I, I was, just, I, I honestly can't, I still can't believe that they just canceled the PVE content. It's nuts, man. Let's see here. Show me the real WoW killer. Oh God, yep. There we go. 